No. You don't believe in the Prince Salah? No. Because, because he, he, he took Abu Bakr's... Uh, he took others? Yeah, Abu because Bakr's. That, yeah, yeah, Abu Bakr's. The, the base color. Yes, he had Abu Bakr's copy mm -hmm. from Pass underneath a pillow. Mm -hmm. But he also had other ones because there were other people reciting the Quran differently, yes? Mm -hmm. Right, so Abdullah ibn Masood recited the Quran with 111 surahs. Ubay ibn Kaab recited with 116 surahs. They disagreed with each other. So there was a clear example from the early Islamic sources, early as in quotes, that clearly contradicts the standard narrative today that the Quran has been properly preserved. The Quran has not been properly preserved. There is many different Qurans. Uthman standardized it. We don't even have it. We don't even have this one's copy. But we, we, were, we were talking about the box. Okay, we talk about, yeah. let's, let's compare it with And he said that he, he wrote it after Jesus, maybe 40 years. And you said that. Yeah, so like most scholars right, would say right. that the, the date of Mark's Gospel, they would say between 60 and 70 AD, probably. And the reason why some scholars say after 70 AD is because they believe that the destruction of the temple couldn't have been prophesied. In other words, they have to assume miracles can't happen, which is why they give a dating of after 70 AD. Uh, and uh, or maybe the many translations that. Uh, this is Greek. It's a Koine Greek. The same, the same language not, that he not same Jesus person. could have spoke because it's possible Jesus spoke Koine Greek. But it's not guaranteed that's spoken with Jesus. Huh? You, you can't guarantee. It's a guarantee that the, the, the Bible, the same word Jesus says. Why can't I? Why can't I say that? Because the, the many translations not the same. No, it, translations. It, translations don't mean a thing. Look, you have an English translation, a Spanish translation, but it's not a French translation. No, they don't. Oh, yeah. No, they are not the same. <laughs> because they are the same. You're talking about translations. You're just taking um, the original language, which is Koine Greek of the New Testament, and you're just translating it into English, into French, into Spanish. But it's the same with the Quran. I can get, I can get an English Quran. Yeah, but you, you have the same Quran. No, no, in the English Quran they put but, brackets. But you can't read it in English. You just, you just, you just, I'm not allowed. You just, <laughs> no, no. Can, can I read the Quran in English? You can't just understand, but you just understand from the English. But you can't read it when you play in English. Right. Are Muslims, Muslims able to translate the Arabic Quran into English? Yeah. They can. Yeah, they can. And, and then when I read it, I am reading what the Quran says. Yeah. Okay, so it's fine then. So I can read the English Quran and I can understand the Quran. But you can't pray by, by the English Quran. I can't. You can't pray by the English Quran. I can't pray. I can't do salat if I don't say Arabic. Yeah. So I, I, as an English speaker, who's, who's native to this country, who only speaks English, I can never be a Muslim. No, you can't. I can be a Muslim. I just have to learn Arabic. Too many Muslims. Most of them don't speak Arabic. Yeah, that's all right. Okay, so you don't need to speak Arabic. You don't need to know Arabic. Then. You have to know Arabic to read the Quran. Do I know what you I'm have to, to to learn how to read? It. So I read, yeah, I need to know Arabic to to read the Arabic Quran. Yeah, but I believe that I can get a translation of the Quran and yeah, also read the Quran. Yeah. Great, that's fine. Though. So you can have translations mm -hmm. that that accurately convey the meaning of the Quran. Yeah, great. That's great. Then. It's fine. You can't do you can't do this. Okay, so I can't. If I, can I say Shahada in in English? You want to say Shahada in Arabic? You have to say it in Arabic. Okay, but I don't speak Arabic. I could, I could tell you. Tell so, you. so I have to say something that I don't know what it means. I, I will translate for you. Okay, so you're doing it right? Oh, I know. Yeah, we had a discussion. Yes. It's alright, we can continue our discussion then. Oh, last it. time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, are you okay? Are you okay for that? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So, um, so what we talked about last time, if I remember correctly, was in the context of the age of Aisha, as well as whether or not Aisha had reached puberty, whether she had menstruated, and I would also like to say that this ties in with what the Quran says in Surah uh, Al-Talaq by uh, four. Right? Are you familiar with that? Told me to. Yeah. Okay, so this is in the what context. We'll, do, uh, we'll conclude. We'll have a, like a brief, like catch up with the discussion we had uh, a couple of weeks ago, and then we wrap it up, and then we move to a new topic because that topic. Yeah, I'm there's, a, there's a lot of things topic. that we spoke about, and I think there's a lot of conclusions that we could make. Oh, yeah. And after that, there was a we had a debate with Shamsi. I think that went really, that went really intense as well. It was you intense. Know, yeah. In that debate, you was totally different. Your personality was different as well. But I think maybe because of the cameras, there's a lot of people. Naturally, someone you know they get really hyped up anyway. But the discussion that we had that was off camera, I really preferred that conversation. Because yeah, I like that. There's a lot of points that I made that you agreed with, and there's a lot 
lot of points that you made that I agreed with sure. as well. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, if you, if you want to read that verse, I don't have a problem with it at all. Sure. Uh, but in the meantime, I'll just say a couple of stuff here. So what the conclusion that we made is that when it comes to Aisha, the biggest argument that I used, of course, was that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if he was really a pedophile, an individual that has sexually perverse things for children, we know automatically they would carry out the sexually perverse acts. And remember the argument that I gave you that after three years, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, waited to conceive the marriage in order for them to be puberty. So that's the main argument that you give. And from that uh, argument that we had last time, from my from my knowledge, you didn't give any refutation for it. You didn't sure. say, yeah, can you give me a refutation? Why did the Prophet okay, Muhammad sure, sure. three years? Sure. First of all, can you prove to me that he waited those three years specifically so she reached puberty? Really easily. Okay, can you, you can show me that? Easily, easily. You know, the exact same verse that you used to okay. prove that Prophet Muhammad married Aisha at the age of six, okay. and was simulated at nine, from that very same verse proves that the Prophet Muhammad waited three years. Do you want to well, go to say Yeah, wait, 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 but that's not what's in question, right? No. I'll go to Sabu Kai. So why did the Prophet wait three years then? Well, well, my point is that it's, the burden of proof is on you to demonstrate that he did that because he was waiting for her to reach puberty. No, but like, even let's say, let's say for the sake of argument, yeah, he did yeah. not wait until the age of puberty. Why would an individual in the verse, why would it automatically say in the verse that the Prophet was six years old, yeah. but at the age of nine, he conceived when he marriage when Aisha was uh, past the age of puberty? How does that make sense? Okay, well, in all honesty, the, the I, don't, I wouldn't like to talk about it too much because we won't, we won't. It, 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 it's, it's, it's not the nicest thing to talk about, right? Because we we we're, we're talking with a six year old, right? right? So why did Muhammad choose not to consummate at the age of six? That's I don't know. Like, right. In all honesty, Chris, I, appreciate I don't know that. why. You said you don't know why, but when I said the verse, when it clearly says that the Prophet waited because in order for Aisha to reach the age of puberty, you don't, that's you don't, fine. You don't. Can you show me that? That's fine, no problem. I can show you that in the meantime. No problem at all. Okay, so I'm going to read. Yeah, just, just, uh, just before you, uh, you read the statement, I'm going to just yeah. say one thing about Christianity, just so I can interlink as well, because you have to be consistent, Chris. Yeah? If you're going to talk about pedophilia from your statements, of course, we will never use that statement. We have to be consistent as well. We have to acknowledge at the time of Moses as well, when uh, God was wanting vengeance for that nation, what did Moses do? When, when Moses found out that his army did not kill the women and children, he said, kill the women yeah. and take the women that were virgins, uh, which basically means that are kids for yourselves. Little girls for yourself. And Chris, you have to, after you give me this hadith, you have to give a response to say that why would God command sure. uh, little girls to be taken for yourself? Sure. So are you, oh, see, I want to address that now, but let me, let me move it, on to that. First of all, let's just talk about what Sahih Abu Qai specifically says here. So we can read. <clears throat> Right, so narrated uh, Hashim's father Khadija died three years before the Prophet departed to Medina. He stayed there for two years or so and then he married Aisha when she was a girl of six years of age. He then consummated that marriage when she was nine years old. So it doesn't mention anywhere specifically about puberty. I can keep reading to the list of these, but none of them actually say anything about puberty. I would, I, in fact, what's interesting is Muhammad Hijab, he did a video not too long ago where he specifically said if you reject lots of different sources, you reject thick, you, you don't look at these things and you just say, Laurie, what does the Quran say? You can clearly make an argument for having sex with three pubescent children. And that was his way of saying you can't just say Quran alone. And uh, this is going to sound quite scary for you right now, yeah? The reason why it's haram to have sexual intercourse with a five-year-old is not found in the Quran whatsoever, it's found in the Sunnah and in fact, and in fact, if you look just at the Quran, you will get the indication that you can have sexual intercourse with a five-year-old. This is my understanding of what the Quran is, if you just take it as that. Surah 65, Ayah 4 clearly says that you can have an idda, a waiting period, for a child who has not yet reached uh, puberty. Do you want to come back at that? Okay, so firstly, when you're talking about ahadith, we have to understand the way we understand ahadith as well, the way the ahadith was collected, we have to understand from the individuals that narrated the hadith themselves what that apparent meaning is. And the ulama, all the ulamas that we take, for example, Ibn Ghazi, he clearly stated that the reason why uh, the Prophet Muhammad waited for the marriage until nine was the age of puberty. So we can understand, just, just let me finish please, yeah? the, the way we understand hadith is from the commentary of the scholars. Because of course, a statement could easily be made and interpreted, as you could probably agree, to anything, right? So that's why we have the ulama, the, scholar, the scholars that interpret the hadith. So that's what the justification that I gave. So Chris, if you could go back to the point that I said about Moses, yeah, Moses when he said yeah. when he said that you could take little girls for yourself, yeah. that's really confusing for me. For, you know, Chris, well, let's that, talk about yeah, it. I will, I will, we'll, speak, we'll speak about that now, yeah, because we'll move to Aisha later on as well. But Chris, you said to me six weeks ago, if you remember, there's some verses in the Bible that you have trouble admitting to and accepting to. I have difficulty from an emotional point of view. Difficulty from an emotional point of view. I really yeah. appreciate that. And even at last time I said that as well, that's really amazing that you appreciate that because we know if someone has doubts to even accept that, that even emotionally, from I mean, yeah, yeah. inclination, that you don't uh, have the ability to accept the verse in the Bible, that shows that you have a level of intellect to know naturally that having babies for yourself 
little goes for yourself is wrong. Yeah. So tell me. Yeah, so just you, you that. like three points here. Just so first of all, just to say that one. But the most I, like anyone who looks uh, into verses that talk about violence, I think that's difficult for everybody. I'm just going to be probably honest about that. I do affirm them, and I affirm them because I believe Scripture is God breathed. Is it Second Timothy? Yeah, thirteen six or three sixteen. Sorry. So what? I would, okay, let's go with these points. You said Ibn Kathir. Now Ibn Kathir actually gives his tafsir about Surah Al um, Surah sixty five ayah four, and he specifically he only adds a tiny bit, and all he says is those who are too young to have menstruated, which isn't actually in Surah sixty five ayah four. It just says those who haven't menstruated. But he adds a tiny bit of his own commentary saying they were too young. So Ibn Kathir actually agrees with my interpretation of that verse. That's also the interpretation of Muhammad Ajab. He, he yeah, thinks that they just take it away. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, cool. So your next point that you talked about was you talked about, hey, there's a, there are verses in the Bible where there's these clearly horrible events, and Moses says specifically to take um, to kill the children, uh, to take the children uh, for yourselves, but to destroy everything else. First of all, virgin, virgin, yeah, do you know where that comes from in the Bible? Do you know where? Specific verse, was it Numbers? No, it's Numbers. Numbers, Numbers, yes. Numbers 31. Numbers 31, yeah. So in this chapter, it specifically gives the context that God actually says destroy everything. Do not take anything from them. Do not take cattle, do not take any property, leave none alive, chase them out. Right? Now, one point of call here is that we know from both the internal text and from scholarly review that when the Bible says to absolutely annihilate them, because that's the word in, in Hebrew, to annihilate, it often doesn't mean to absolutely eradicate all of them. And we know this because they actually still existed after the event. In other words, there's still Canaanites after this happened. That's really big to be honest, Chris. What you're I'm saying, saying is, is that... I think yeah. what you're trying to say, Chris, is that when the Bible... You're saying from your statements, when the Bible says everything, mm. it doesn't generally mean everything, okay? You no, know, it's a type of writing. Type of writing. Hyperbolic. Bigger speech or whatever you want to call it's it. It's hyperbolic writing that's fine. that okay, we know cool. is often used yeah, by the writers fine. in the New York If the that was the case, case if yeah. that was the case for your... For, for the sake of argument, if that was the case, then we have to affirm that when there's exemptions, when there's specific commandments... I don't understand, Chris, you're not attacking the verse. You're just saying everything, and this is the reason why it's not that. But we have to. I'm finished yet. Right, well, Chris, <laughs> I'll just, I'll just yeah. reaffirm my point one more time and then you can respond right. to it. So we have to, uh, Chris, when there's a Bible verse, we have to accept it from his statements, from his meanings. So when Moses said, when Moses clearly said, kill yes. all the women, yes. kill all the men, yes. okay, women, and then keep the virgin girls for yourself. So let's, let's finish it. It's 30 seconds. Right, right. I will let you speak. Oh, we have a good conversation. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know I always let you speak. Yeah, yeah, so right. when Moses clearly said, that keep the virgin girls for yourself and kill all the women and men. These are specific verses, Chris. They're not verses where you can say this is everything, this is vague, this is ambiguous. This is a clear, specific verse, Chris. So you Absolutely. have to prove to me, Chris, so what, what does this mean? Absolutely. When it says virgin girls for yourself, Chris, what does it mean? Okay, I'll just reply. So you're totally right. It isn't sufficient for me simply to say, well, you, there's a potentiality that everything is hyperbolic. Thank That's you. not sufficient. Thank you. Thank you. But it is just a little bit of context to what I'm about to say That's now. Fine. That's fine. So that content now, the context now is I want you to understand. First of all, most Moses was the one who actually gave that command, not Yahweh. Yahweh's command actually was different, and if you look at the context, the Israelites disobeyed that command. They didn't wipe everyone out, they took things for themselves. But Moses then comes in and says, oh you failed to do this, okay well I'm going to tell you to do this. So it specifically came from Moses and not from Yahweh. The second one I want to point out is, often you'll hear Muslims and you'll hear Dayas say things like, well, in the verse, and they're referring to number 31 verse 18, they'll say, it says take uh, the young virgins. And the idea is that this is children, and the idea, which, which I think it might be children. Virgin children? Yeah, well, well, let me explain. But the idea is that this, this is uh, in the context of sex. In other words, you take them as slaves and then you have sex with them. But we know for a fact from scripture that that's wrong. We know from Deuteronomy 21 verse 10, I believe. You have to check me on that one. It gives clear instruction from a law that says how you are to treat your slaves. And it says you can't have sex with your slaves. It says if you want to have sexual intimacy with a woman, you have to marry them. And you have to go through this process of giving her space, giving her a month away, where she is away from you, she is given time to grieve for her, the loss of her family, and if she chooses not to stay with you, you have to let her go. You can't sell her, because you have dishonoured her. So clearly we know from these verses that you cannot take these women and have sex with them. Here's another point. So Ezekiel chapter 16 verse 6. In Ezekiel it gives us a, an understanding as to uh, an analogy of Israel as a young woman. And she's growing up, it's an analogy. And as she grows she starts to develop different features, she develops breasts, she develops pubic hair. And um, Yahweh looks at Israel and then he looks uh, at, at Israel again once they have developed these features. And then God says that you are now a woman. This to us is a good way of understanding the difference between a child and a woman. Uh, can I ask you a question yeah? Okay, so 
Chris, you're saying instead of blaming God, you said there was Moses' commandments. But yeah. we know every single prophet that came, he came with a message of God. Unless you're trying to say the prophets are sinful and they come from their own desires. I do say that prophets sometimes do not do what God commanded. You have how are they prophets? This, how are they prophets this is the difference between the Islamic aspect. Whenever a prophet says something, yeah. we believe that Prophet Muhammad he did not speak from his own desires. He spoke from revelation as well. And of course, as Muslims, we believe Moses, he also spoke from revelation as well. So of course, Muslims at that time would have to follow Moses. But what you did is, instead of uh, accepting the responsibility of God, let's go to the bus right now. Can you pull the numbers uh, by any shots? Sure. Put numbers. Because the reason why Moses committed that genocide was in order to get vengeance. Vengeance from who? For the Lord. Because who were those people? What did they used to do? They were sinful people, right? According to your belief. But those people, the reason, the justification Moses gave was from vengeance from God. Like, now you cannot say that. Okay, let's go to the bus. Let's go to the bus. Let's go to the bus. And then, for vengeance. Prevent from God, like from number one. From when you go to numbers, go from number, verse number one all the way to verse number sixteen. Yeah, we have to be consistent. So now we can see that clearly, even though you're trying to divert the topic by saying that, oh, in the in the Bible it says that you cannot have sexual intercourse with a slave. But now, no, no, it is. Let me tell you why. Because that that topic, that specific passage that I'm talking about, clearly, it clearly says Moses. So we know the enforcement was that Moses was going to kill all men. He's going to kill all women. And he, they clearly said, virgin, virgin women, keep the virgin girls for yourself. Okay. And now let me explain to you, someone they come about. Virgin girls for yourself. And that clearly means when, it, when someone is specified that these people are virgins, why? Because virgin people are deemed pure. And those are the people that are going to uh, do intercourse with. Because they clearly said, married, married women kill them. Married women kill them. So we can clearly see this is wrong. So I am. There's so many verses in the Bible that affirms this. Let me one more point There's so many verses in the Bible. When, when I was talking about that those people, there was a time where people were killed because of the sins of their ancestors and the exact same passage happened here. It was men killed and take the women and children for yourself. So this is two passages sure. that supports my point. Okay, so he hasn't actually addressed what I've said here. I've, I've clearly explained from scripture there is no basis for having sex with your, your female captives. You have to marry them and you have to go through okay, a so process. Just, I quote the verse here. I just okay. want to understand one thing then. Okay. So when it says virgin girls for yeah. yourself. Yes. When it says kill men and kill children, but virgin girls for yourself. Yes. What does it mean to play like a... Right, let me explain. Them, let me explain. Them, the, the, context, them. the context... Come on. The, the context, context explains it. The context is of the particular tribes. I've ever seen Malachites in this context. Yep, I don't know Malachites, Partic yeah. Particularly practice things that are abhorrent to Yahweh. Okay. And when Israel joined themselves to them, and they had men marrying women and taking the, their women to them, they were bringing in these particular practices. These were pagan, these were against so Yahweh. This is just no, this, I'm explaining what, what the context you're, you're is. explaining the context to justify why those people were killed. So my children were killed. Yes. But does that make it just... Okay, cool, Chris. I understand your point. You're trying to make okay. a justification. But my point is, you're... you're, you're why, why are children getting killed? Okay, can I, can, I, can I finish this? Yeah, right. So you're trying to say, hang on a second. When it says um, taking the virgin girls, that's, so, that's in a sexual context. And I'm saying we know that's not true. What does it because mean there are parts of Deuteronomy that explicitly forbid that. What does it mean this? I already explained to you, I was just giving you the context. So, okay, what, is, what is the virgin girls? The, the, the context is that if they have not had sex with a man, they have they have not really um, enjoined themselves onto Israel and, and, and perverted Israel through their behavior. In other words, if they're young enough that they have not yet uh, engaged in that, then they're innocent. That's the idea. Okay, wait, that doesn't make sense. Also, let me, let me explain again. Let, no, wait, 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 let me let me finish this. Let me finish this. This did not come from Yahweh. This was Moses. Yahweh's original instruction early on in the chapter is, is that um, you would eradicate everyone. Are you numbers? Yes, it is. You read numbers. Look, I've already explained it. Because you've, you've made no, many points. I said, no, the reason why I told you to pull out numbers is because in the numbers it clearly says the reason why Moses carried out these actions when he killed women. By the way, women are women responsible for the actions. You know, the justification that Christians give is that the women they were involved in telling the husbands to do these things. So why are women? That's that's not their responsibility. Why were they killed? But your justification was that it wasn't Moses uh, from God. It was, sorry, it was Moses that carried out the commandment. It wasn't God. So if you read Numbers right now, it clearly says that Moses was carrying out the actions which was from the vengeance of God. Mm. So that means God prescribed the law to kill innocent people. And Chris, you didn't answer the question when I linked it back to the other passages in the Old Testament when it clearly says, Chris, you have to affirm, and you said these verses were difficult to accept. When it says kill the innocent women, kill the innocent children, kill the innocent cattle, mm. kill the innocent horses, kill these animals. Yeah, yeah but why? But why well, Chris? Because we why? have an understanding why? that, that Yahweh is... Judgment, though, Chris. Don't say Chris, uh, the judgment. morality comes from God, yes? 
morality you comes understand. from God. Okay. So we understand that God, in His understanding and wisdom, wisdom. knows all things, both past, present, and future. Yep. And He knows the consequences of His actions and yep. of others' actions. I agree with you. Right. I agree with you. There are many reasons as to why God would have permitted this to happen yep. at this particular time and place. This is, an, this, show you, this is this is an isolated event about a particular tribe that had particular involvement with the Israelites. This is not a general commandment to the world. Children. Yes. I again How? I also explained to you How? that when the Hebrew Bible talks about the annihilation of very strong language in the in the Hebrew word. You're repeating again then. Yes I am because you're you're, you're not accepting because it. Because I'm saying oh, I accept it. Look, Chris, look, I'm being sincere with you. Okay. I'm accepting with you. Okay. When you say general, okay. I agree with you, it's quite difficult, like right. it's ambiguous. But Chris, well, it's not ambiguous. No, I think it's quite when you say general, it could be anything. You know, if there's no specific criteria, then how are we gonna know what it means? Mm. Yes? So, but when it says children, Chris. You have to answer the question. Please be sincere, Chris. Please. I'm uh, okay, sorry. I believe you're being sincere. Thank you very much. But the thing is, that it's, just, uh, you're, it's not like you don't want to answer this question. I don't know. I maybe answer it's the big question. So no, what, what is your answer? Then? No, just but when it comes to clear, yeah, so and let, let him speak as well. No, okay, no, listen, like, listen. I'll just give a kidding. summary. Yes. About children, about children, why did they kill them? What are they going to do? God has ultimate authority over what is good and what is not good. There are, there are reasons as to why God can permit certain things in this particular context. But Chris, context. me and you both believe that God is just. Yes, we do indeed. So we, we so also we believe... Oh, okay, okay, okay. So, do you affirm Solomon Gomorrah? Of course. Okay, so, so did, Son did Solomon Gomorrah kill children? Okay, no. Why? No, why would you... So wait... You did know, Solomon Gomorrah oh, kill you, everyone in that city? No. No? I'll tell you who he killed. Simple answer. I'll you know the Quran says it destroyed I'll everyone. I think it was killed. I think it was killed. The, the transgressors, no, in the the transgressors, the people. No, that it destroyed the, the entire. Oh, so we have a whole the whole Quran. No, in the Quran, does it say that the the children were killed? Everyone. No, it says no, everyone. It, it says everyone. The whole, the whole everyone. Quran. It says Quran, everyone. Quran. What does it say? Quran. Does it say that the Quran uh, Allah prescribed the uh, the death of children? It's the Bible, it's the Bible. I also want to be clear. No, the transgressors. The transgressors I also want to be clear. You're going to have problems if you have issues with the death of children because Muhammad also allowed for the death of children. That's really funny. Okay. 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 So okay. 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 One second, one second, one second. Now you, you made a big claim right now. You said that Prophet Muhammad. Yeah, now I'm going to repeat him easily, easily. Because the Prophet Muhammad said when you go to war, yeah, you don't kill the monk, you don't harm the priest. You don't harm the women and you don't harm the children. Clear hadith. And the can, I, can I read yeah, a hadith? Clear hadith. Can I read a hadith? Okay. <clears throat> this is uh, Sunan Ibn Majah 2839. You can check it on your phone as well. It was narrated that Ibn Abbas said, Sayyid bin Jatim, I can't pronounce that for the life of me, said the Prophet was asked about the polytheists who were attacked at night and their women and children are killed. He said, they are from among them. Did he specifically prescribe them to go and specifically kill the women and children? No, he, he, he or said it's because it was, it's night, it's it's because it was night time, they were attacking them at night, it's easy, right. it's not as it's harder to distinguish who you're killing. Okay. That, was a, that was a necessary thing. Okay, but did Mohammed say, whoa, whoa, you shouldn't kill women and children? Yeah, he does. I just read a verse. Yeah, that's because you isolate it. What do you mean? You can't because you're Is there a hadith for contrary, sir? Yes. Can you show me? No contradicts, but affirms uh, uh, the meaning. What's the meaning? The li literally what I said to you, in a battle of war, the Prophet Muhammad said, said, yeah, if you go to war, yeah. you cannot harm women, you cannot harm yeah. children, you cannot harm the mob, you cannot harm the, the, the trees. No, even the polytheists, that's, a, that's the commandment. But this is the commandment. The, the, the command right? was written for the Yeah, this, this, this would have been hundreds of years after the event, but yeah. Well, the hadith was written 100, 200 years after. What the hadith you Okay, now, don't insult me. Don't insult me. Brother, please don't insult me. Let's have a nice conversation. Okay, let me tell you something. Let's go back to the topic now, yeah? So you are Quran affirms the killing of children. Do you want me to finish Your that? hadith affirms the killing of children. Okay, let me respond to that. As okay. the Prophet was saying, yeah, when it comes to war, and there's a context, and we have to understand that some things happen yeah. without the Prophet Muhammad allowing it to happen, okay? So the Prophet Muhammad, clearly, we can see if he gave a statement when he said, we do not kill children, do not kill the monk, do not kill the tree, and do not kill anyone innocent in battle, that affirms the meaning. So when it comes to isolated cases, when individuals carried out the act, this is not in the name of the Prophet Muhammad, he's the Now, uh, Chris, I want you to go back to the point about the kill, killing the children, okay? The justification that you gave was what? That God knows all things, that He predestines all things, and gives us free will. Now let's go back to that topic. Let's, let's talk about that. Let's talk about God. What right? I'm saying though, let's talk about is God. that there are situations in which God uh, can allow for certain acts to happen, knowing full well the events that occur after. And I don't believe that. Let me tell you, you why. Believe no. Because I believe, okay. I believe in God's nature. I believe in God's attributes. And from God's attributes, I believe He's the most just, He's the most merciful. And I believe a most merciful God mm. and a most just God mm. will not kill innocent children. So you don't believe the in the Quran? Ancestors. You don't believe in the Quran? Okay, so in the Quran, Quran, you're telling me that it could be. Solomon's a boy. When Allah talks about destroying entire civilizations, 
obviously children and innocent people were killed and those people as well. But obviously, the justification for the Muslim perspective is if a child dies, regardless of how they die, they're innocent, they're going to heaven anyway, right? Yeah. And so if everybody is killed, you can't just say, oh, you know, even though Allah destroyed these people, he only destroyed their cities. Like, no, it's the whole like, civilization that wiped out. Yeah, yeah. Just, just to add to that, who, who owns our bodies? For you, it's not Allah. Allah is the owner of all things, right? Oh, exactly. So, so, and, and because Allah knows all things, he has the divine prerogative to be able to say what he's got and it's not good. Yeah. So you're going to have problems if you try and point at issues at us, because I can point with issues at you as well. Because the justification was not given for the sins of the ancestors. So the justification, the justification for killing innocent children was not given for the sins of the ancestors. I don't understand what you mean by that. So that basically, when those, no, of course, when the Malachites were killed, and when God gave the reasoning why those people were killed, the innocent children, the cattle, the people, yeah. simply because... You know it was prophesied, right? Yeah, right? What was the it doesn't matter, for the sins of the ancestors. Okay, then that's so, messed up. Because that's not just. No, but he's saying... Wait, wait, okay, well, you're going to have problems with that as well. So, did Jesus die on a cross? I, I, I promise this is relevant. Did Jesus die on the cross? He didn't, right? Did someone just... Uh, was someone's image placed um, on him so it made it look like you're Jesus assuming it's a human being? No, but I don't understand. How's that related? But, but did Allah make? Did Allah intervene and He convinced those who watched that Jesus did actually die, but in reality He didn't? No, no. It says they neither killed him nor did he die. That's all it says. But, but, no, but, the, it also but the, says in the Quran, it doesn't specifically talk about how someone was put there that looked like him. It does. It says he, a resemblance was uh, placed on him. Oh, it does. Yeah, it does. In, in the verse. This is Surah 4, Ayah 157. What was your point? My point is, is that clearly there, some. Here you go. No, I'm coming. Are you? Oh, yeah. Do you have to pray as well? <laughs>